U.S. Trade Representative Ambassador Robert Lighthizer and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, the president's lead negotiators on the U.S.-China uh, trade negotiations. Ambassador Lighthizer joining us and uh, on what is the latest in the China trade deal. Well, I have the deal right here, the agreements right here. This is the English version. Um, we are about finished with the translation. It always takes time. It does in the Japanese deal. It does all. But, but right. right here, you're the first to see it. This is the agreement. Great. We're going to make it public on uh, on Wednesday before the signing. That's you know that's the decision we want to make. But we've given a lot of people briefings so people know right. more or less what's in it. And and let's start with first. Uh, China is no longer a currency manipulator as a uh, precondition. I, I assume uh, to the uh, to the deal. Uh, the impact of that decision uh, as you uh, move forward with phase one. So I would say in this agreement there are a variety of real structural changes. One of those is commitments on currency, right. not to be a uh, 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 to manipulate your currency. That is not to do competitive devaluations, and then also certain transparency. So we have an enforceable commitment on currency in this agreement, and I think that's the reason that the secretary decided that it was not necessary uh, to, to to have them be a currency manipulator. Listen under the statute. And uh, obviously you will be able to get uh, pretty clear uh, information on whether or not they break that deal by just simply watching them in the in the market. Uh, the second part of the, the, the market where there are tripwires here is if they continue to steal uh, U.S. intellectual property, if they carry out cyber attacks, uh, that certainly uh, is visible. It is a tripwire, as I say. What will be the U.S. response and over what period of time will it be required uh, of the Chinese uh, to demonstrate that they are uh, in full compliance? Uh, well, I would say, first of all, if I can put this in a little bit of context, I know you sure. don't need it, but others may. So, so we believe that we have a serious problem with China, both an imbalanced economic relationship and wildly imbalanced, like 450 or more billion dollars a year in deficit. Mm -hmm. In addition, there's a lot of unfair practices, and then there are practices, uh, as you suggest, like uh, cyber theft and the like. You really, the president's been talking about this for for at least 30 years, right? He's been talking about it for a right. long, long time. And so he decided we would try to tackle it. So so you have two choices. You try to decouple the economies. That probably is not practical. Or you try to write rules that work for the United States and benefit the United sure. States. And that's what the president decided to do. And what he did is he decided to do it in tranches so that you can get done what you need to get done. And this deal has real structural change. It has significant substantial purchases, um, it also is completely enforceable. And we maintain $380 billion worth of tariffs on important products. So across the board, it's a really, really good deal for the United States, and it will work if reformers in China want it to work. And if that happens, great. If it doesn't happen, it's fully enforceable. Now, there are other problems that exist with China, and they're going to continue to exist. And we'll take on those in, in phase two sure. or phase two and three as needed. And they're really serious problems. Yeah. But, but the biggest thing, to me at least, is to get a big, really big deal going. And you'll be able, there are a lot of ways you can tell what they're doing. The purchasing is easy to enforce. Sure. The currency we've talked about. These other issues, we will have people looking at whether or not they're living up to their commitments on tech transfer, on IP, on financial services opening, on agriculture standards issues and the like. So this is something that we'll have to monitor. I'm not Pollyanna about any of this, right? We're, we're tough, hard people, and we expect them to live up to the letter of the law. We'll bring cases. We'll bring actions against them if they don't. But, but for right now, this is a really, really big agreement, a huge step forward. A, a, a huge step forward, and you're getting some counsel from the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Ambassador, uh, about what you could do to improve this. Uh, this would be emanating from the same organization that was responsible, at least in terms of its lobbying, for much of the mess the country's been in on trade for the past 40 years. 
Well, I'm not going to argue with that conclusion. There's an old expression that, uh, you know, that nothing's impossible for the man that doesn't have to do it. And I always, I always come to mind, and I won't go through it now, but the great, uh, uh, you know, the great uh, Teddy Roosevelt's quote about the critic. And, the, you know, the critic is not the person who, who ends up getting the credit. It's the person who's actually in the, you know, in the fight. In the the president's in the fight, and he's, he's the one who's, who, who's, who's, uh, standing up and really for the first time remember this is not a new problem this is o obama it's it's uh, george w bush and it was really in many places made massively worse in the clinton administration and every single person said they would take it on and this is the first president who's done it so people can chirp it doesn't bother me at all i think that the president's got a vision he's got us working hard on it and we have a huge step forward uh, and as i said Congratulations to you, to Secretary Mnuchin, and of course, President Trump, who, as you correctly uh, stated, has been working on this issue for a very long time and is backing up exactly what he said. And, and I have to tell you, just as an observer of all of this, uh, Ambassador, what fun it has been to watch the so-called orthodoxy, uh, the, uh, the purveyors of the status quo uh, who have uh, just single-handedly sought to uh, stop this president. With tariffs, which they said wouldn't work, we now are at agreement uh, with the Chinese with tariffs, which they said would destroy markets and the economy, uh, historic growth, historic markets. Uh, thank you for all you've done, Ambassador. We appreciate it so much. Thanks for being Great. with us thank tonight. You. But thank you for having me, Lewis. It's an honor to be on your show.